डॉक्टर बाबा साहेब आंबेडकर ओपन यूनिवर्सिटी Hello my dear students and my friends to welcome I am welcoming you all in the video lecture series conducted by the Dr Baba Saheb Ambedkar Open University Ahmedabad in the Chaitanya studio let us start our topic today for the subject financial management BBA 202 financial management in block number 1 unit number 4 time value of money in the next topic that is as we previous in a previous lecture we conduct uh, we calculate or we calculate that the different theories with respect to the financial management as well as the time value of money now let us start with the practical portion of the time value of money in that first that is compounded value of the single amount in that my dear friends the formulas is there compounded value is equal to p0 bracket 1 plus i raised to n where the cv is equal to compounded value let us examine it with the illustration that is mr shukla has deposited rupees 50000 with y bank this deposits would earn 8% interest per annum and this deposit is made for the duration for the 6 year so here my dear friends n is equal to 6 year i is equal to 0.08 or we can say the 8% interest and your p0 that is initial investment is equal to rupees 50000 so for the calculation of the compounded value of a single amount that is cvn is equal to p0 bracket 1 plus i raised to n so 50000 in bracket 1 plus 0.08 raised to 6 so you will be get 1.587 multiply with the 50000 then you will be get 79350 rupees is it clear my dear friends hope you well hope you done well in this particular session because this is nothing but your formula based method so you have to evaluate each and every aspect of time value of money with a particular formula so this is the first formula what we learn that compounded value of a single amount is equal to nothing but your p0 plus multiply with the 1 plus i raised to n now let's move on to the different compounding period That is CVN is equal to P zero bracket one plus I raised to I upon N bracket close raised to M into N, where the N is equal to you are nothing but the number of times per year compounded is done. Let us illustrate it with the one basic example that is when the half yearly compounded is given, then when the quarterly compounding is given, and the when the yearly compounded is given. If the yearly is given, then it is nothing but your single amount, but not with the differentiate with the half yearly compounded or a full year, or we can say the quarterly. So here the one illustration is that that is Sankar has deposited rupees sixty thousand for the period of a six year at a six percent. So here your value is given that is P zero is sixty thousand and the six year that is your n that is number of periods that is six year and six percent interest that the, that is your interest rate that is zero point zero six or you can consider as a six percent also and compounding is done half yearly here the word half yearly is most important why because this specifically mentioned that it is this is not for the single period or a single amount or a single time this is half yearly that means that you have to evaluate with the two different time or we can say the two part to determine the amount which is receivable at the end of 6 year that means that you have to evaluate it as a half yearly and after the 6 year that means this is the one element that in a previous uh, formula we considered the only n component that is the number of year but here the compounding is also done so here the m is equal to nothing but your compounding so compounding is done for the twice in a particular year why because is a half yearly so formula will be the cvn is equal to p0 bracket 1 plus i upon n raised into m into n so p0 is equal to as we discussed that is 60000 1 plus i i that is your interest rate that is 0.06 divided by 2 now question is sir why 2 here you define the n and different m so yes my dear friends here the typographical error so we can consider it is a m not an n so compounding is done twice so we can consider it is a at a 
and uh, multiply with the 2 into 6 that is compounding for a 2 and total is a 6 year. So, you will be get 85,560 rupees as a compounding at a half yearly on that different compounding period. Here the note is given that is 2 time into 6 year that is 12 years and 6 percent divided by 2 ultimately 3 percent. Either you evaluate with this 3 percent also or either you get this particular in a formula base also. So my advice to you all that go for the formula and not go for the different logics because formula is a strategified and mathematical expectations are there. So you will be get easily answered over it. Let's move to the different illustration in a different sense that is when the quarterly compounding is given. In a previous that is a half yearly compounding is given and in this particular session that with the quarterly compounding is given. So there are the two different dimensions are there when we are considering the half year and second is for the quarterly. So Shiva has the deposited rupees 60,000 for the period of 6 year at the 8 percent and compounding is done quarterly. So here my dear friend 60,000 is your P0 then 8 percent is your interest that is 0 0.08 and 6 year that is your N easily. Now question is quarterly then means sir how much compounding is there? my dear friends quarter is for the three 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 months so ultimately there are four quarter so p0 bracket one plus i is to m into m into n so here 0 0.08 divided by 4 and 2 into 6 because 6 years are common are there so we will be get 96480 rupees are there is it clear my dear friends yes or no hope you get well move to the compounded value of series of cash flows are there in that first point that is when the cash flow take place at the end of the year. So basically the meaning of annuity is a series of cash flow that is inflow or outflow of a fixed amount for a specified period that is number of year. The following formula can be used to determine the compounded value of a series of a uneven cash flows that is CV is equal to P1 bracket 1 plus I raise to N minus 1 plus P2 1 plus i raised to n minus 2 to the infinity or whatever the number of years are there. So when we are talking about where the CVN is equal to your compounded value at the end of the n year, P1 is equal to payment of the end of the year 1, payment of the year 2, payment of the year n and I stand for the interest. Let us illustrate it. Ravi deposited start the amount deposited stated the amount at the end of the respective year rupees 15,000, 25,000, 20,000, 10,000, 25,000. So here the first, second, third, four and fifth. There are total five years are given. Okay. Then moving towards the different eras that is in this saving amount for the year T1, T2, T3, T4, T5. The interest rate is 8%. So what will be the compounded value of his deposited at the end of fifth year? So CV is equal to P1 bracket 1 plus I raise to N minus 1 plus P2 1 plus I raise to N minus 2 to the fifth year. So here we get P1 that is 15,000 1 plus 0 0.08 N minus 1 that is 5 minus 1 that is 4 then 25 minus bracket 1 plus 0 0.08 to 5 minus 2 is equal to 3 then uh, again 3 minus 5 minus 3 is equal to 2 then 1 then 0 so you will be get total answer will be 96,020 rupees so this is nothing but your mathematical calculation nothing to do well just go for the formula put it the value and you will be get the answer this is very easy in a nature Next move to the second portion that is when the cash flow take place in the beginning of the year. In a previous previous uh, example that is end of the year now it is at the beginning of the year. Then nothing to do well in this formula whenever you cut down that n minus 1 here do not go for the minus 1 just put the n as it is. So CV is equal to P0 bracket 1 plus i is to n plus p1 1 plus i is 2 and 1 n minus 1 then p2 1 plus i n minus 2 to the infinity or to the number of years let us illustrate that mr raj deposited st stated in the beginning of the respective year rupees 15000 and rupees 25000 20000 10000 and 25000 in his saving account in the year t0 t1 t2 t3 t4 
interest rate is 8%, what will be the compound value of his deposited at the end of the fifth year? So formula is simplified are that P0 1 plus I bracket close and P1 1 plus I n minus 1 to the fourth year. So 15,000 1 plus 0 0.085, 25,000 1 plus 0 0.85 minus 1 that is 4 again 3 2 and 1 so you will be get total answer will be 1 lakh 19,895 here again we do nothing just put the formula over there and put that particular value over there so we will be get the perfect answer over it is it clear my dear friends yes or no let's move on to the another illustration that is raman deposited rupees 5000 today that is t0 at 8% at 12% at rate of interest in how many years will we get this amount get doubled so when we talk about the amount get doubled or whatever the allowed that then we have to understand there is a two rules are there that is rule 72 and rule 69 where rule 72 is talk about that the dp is equal to nothing but your 72 divided by i so 72 divided by 12 is equal to nothing but your 6 years and 69 that is 0 0.35 plus 69 divided by 2 so answer will be the 6.1 years so this will be the given that is rule 72 and rule 69 hope you understand well in this example now let's move to the present value of single amount that means pv is equal to future value bracket 1 upon 1 plus i bracket close is to n or future value is equal to pv ifa i minus n where the pv is equal to present value f is equal to future value receivable at the end of the r years or whatever the years are there then i is equal to nothing but your interest rate or discounting factor of the cost of capital and n is equal to duration of cash flow here i is missing so consider interest rate or discounting factor or a cost of capital that is i let us illustrate it an investor is expecting to rupees 60000 at the end of third year at a 10% discount rate determine the present value of a future receivable amount for rupees 60000 then easily you have to put the, this formula pv is equal to fe bracket 1 plus 1 divided by 1 plus i bracket close whole bracket close this to n so 40000 1 upon 1 plus 0 0.10 is to 3 why because i is equal to 10 percent so we consider as 0 0.10 and the year is given that is a three year that is third year that is three year and amount is given that is a uh, that is 60,000 so here the 40,000 is 60,000 is given uh, the expecting 60,000 at the end of the third year at a 10 percent discount rate then the fuel receivable amount is rupees 60,000 here the typographical error are there before do uh, write the 60,000 instead of 60,000 write a 40,000 so answer will be 40,000 multiply with 0 0.751 so you will be get 30,040 rupees over there is it clear my dear friends now let's move to the present value of series of cash flow the present value of uneven cash flows the following formulas can be used that is pv is equal to cif 1 upon 1 plus i is to 1 CIF 2 upon 1 plus i raised to 2 to the nth number of year where the CIF 1 and 1 plus i indicates that the cash inflow at the end of the first year and the present value rate at the end of the first year and so on where PV is equal to present value CIF is equal to cash inflows i is equal to rate of interest and n is equal to number of years now let us illustrate it with this particular example from the following information calculate the present value of cash inflow at 10 percent rate here is given cash inflows is given 10,000 12,000 9,000 10,000 11,000 nothing to do well you just put the formula over there that is present value is equal to CIF 1 upon 1 plus i raised to 1 plus CIF 2 upon 1 plus i raised to 2 to the nth number of years. So here the 10,000 divided by 1 plus 0 0.10 raised to 1 plus 12,000 
1 plus 0 0.10 raised to 2 then 9000 divided by 1 plus 0 0.10 raised to 3 plus 10,000 divided by 1 plus 0 0.10 raised to 4 plus 11,000 1 plus 0 0.10 raised to 5. So, you will be get 9090 0, 0 in the first year then 9917 in second, 6762 in the third, 6830 in the fourth and 6830 in a fifth year. So, after the summation of this all, then you will be get 39,429 rupees for a particular cash inflow. So, here we can say that this is your, the amount that is present value of uneven cash flow is given. Let us move on to the different second that is present value of even cash flow is given when the cash flow is a same in each year. Then the formula would be CIF1 bracket 1 plus I raise to N same formula is applied over it so nothing to worry let us move to the directly to the illustration the following information calculate the present value of cash inflows at a 10 percent interest rate that is here is given 1 to 5 cash flows is even that is in equal amount that is 12,000 12,000 12,000 12,000 and 12,000 in each year now put this formula as previous example so, you will be get total answer is 45,489 rupees. Nothing to do well here. The formula is same. The amount is even. So, the answer will be the differ from it. Is it clear my dear friends? Yes or no? Now, let us move to the next point that is sinking fund factor. In that, the formula will be AP is equal to FVA N upon 1 that is I upon 1 plus i raised to n minus 1 where the ap is equal to annual payment fean is equal to future value after n year and i is equal to interest rate so here the illustration is given that is financial manager of the company want to redeem the debenture of rupees 10 lakh at the end of the fifth year its interest rate is 12 percent calculate the annual payment required so, answer will be AP is equal to FVN upon 1 I upon 1 plus I raised to N minus 1. So, 10 lakhs divided by 1 I is equal to your 0 0.12. 1 plus 0 0.12 is to 5 minus 1. So, you will be get 1 0.157406. So, here you will be get multiply with the 10 lakhs. So, you will be answer will be the 1 lakh 57,406 rupees as an annual payment required. So, this is what your sinking fund factor is there. Let us move to the last and important point that is loan amortization. That is loan amortization or we can say the loan installment formula is equal to PA that is your principal amount multi bracket I 1 plus I raise to N upon 1 plus I raise to N minus 1 where the LI is equal to loan installment. PA is equal to principal amount, I is equal to interest rate and R is equal to number of years or we can say the N is equal to number of years. Illustration that. That is a Simran company limited as a raise a rupee loan of rupees 15 lakh at, at the 9% interest uh, rate per year. And this loan to be the repaid in 6 equal installments that means a year is a 6 year. Then the calculate the amount of installments. So formula as defined above that is formula put it down. Then 15 lakhs multiply with the 0 0.091 plus 0 0.09 is to 6 divided by 1 plus 0 0.09 is to 6 minus 1 that is 5. So ultimately you will be get 0 0.2229 for that particular summations are there. And then multiply with the 15 lakh rupees so you will be get the perfect loan installment for a per year that is 3 lakh 34,500 per a year if you want this in a month then divided by 12 divided it by 12 then you will be get the per month installment also so this is my dear friends the practical portion of the time value of money as we discussed in a previous session that is a theoretical portion of the time value of money in this session we discuss the different practical approach of the time value of money so hope you learn well in this session for this if you want to study more with respect to the practical portion as well as the theory portion then you go for the further reading also that is financial management for by the pc tulsian and bharat tulsian and financial management by the ravi m kishore so you will be get the enhancement of this particular unit that is time value of money in financial management hope you learn well 
होप यू डू वेल इन दिस पर्टिकुलर सेशन होप यू एन्जॉय दिस वीडियो थैंक यू वेरी मच माई डियर फ्रेंड्स वी विल मीट इन अ नेक्स्ट सेशन थैंक यू वेरी मच यहाँ पर